Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Malcolm Geit, who is an English poet, singer-songwriter, Anglican priest, and an academic. He was born in 1957. For many of our listeners, today is the day when they uh, commemorate and recognize Ash Wednesday. Many of you are uh, going to church today and having ashes put on your forehead in the sign of the cross. And one of my colleagues here, Brandon, uh, actually requested this poem, and it's by Malcolm Guy. It's called Ash Wednesday. And uh, it seemed the right day to, to read this poem. If you want to learn more about Malcolm Guy, you can go to his website, which is Malcolm Geit, that's G U I T E, dot WordPress dot com. Again, that's Malcolm Geit dot WordPress dot com for more on Malcolm Guy. Lots of poetry there, lots of his other writings, uh, some of his talks and his songs and things like that. So, this is Ash Wednesday by Malcolm Guide, per Brandon's request. Receive this cross of ash upon your brow, brought from the burning of Palm Sunday's cross. The forests of the world are burning now, and you make late repentance for the loss. But all the trees of God would clap their hands, the very stones themselves would shout and sing if you could covenant to love these lands and recognize in Christ their Lord and King. He sees the slow destruction of those trees. He weeps to see the ancient places burn. And still you make what purchases you please, and still to dust and ashes you return. But hope could rise from ashes even now, beginning with this sign upon your brow. When Brandon sent me this, this poem, he, he added a, um, a, a comment here that Malcolm Guide included, which I'll read to you. And this is what it says. As I set about the traditional task of burning the remnants of last Palm Sunday's palm crosses in order to make the ash, which would bless and sign our repentance on Ash Wednesday, I was suddenly struck by the way both the fire and the ash were signs, not only of our personal mortality and our need for repentance and renewal, but also signs of the wider destruction our sinfulness inflicts upon God's world and on our fellow creatures, on the whole web of life into which God has woven us and for which he also cares. So some of these themes are visited in this sonnet. End quote. I'm glad that Malcolm Guy mentioned that this is a sonnet because I love the way he uses the form of the sonnet to express so much. All of the traditional markings of a sonnet are here. The iambic pentameter, the rhyme schemes, the number of lines and so forth. But most especially most especially what's here, is the turn in the final couplet. So all those things that he talked about, the need for repentance and renewal, but also the signs of wider destruction our sinfulness inflicts upon God's world and on our fellow creatures, all of that's there in those first 12 lines. But then in the couplet, we get the true, we get the turn, the turn towards redemption. And it goes, but hope could rise from ashes even now, beginning with this sign upon your brow. And so the sign takes on new meaning. The sign, it represents the sinfulness, perhaps. It represents that destruction, or at least it remembers that destruction and it forces us uh, to remember our sins. But it also is in the sign of the cross. And in that sign is the hope that is in that turn. Uh, and so the full meaning of Ash Wednesday and of this season uh, is embodied not just in that cross but in this poem and in the uh, in the way that Malcolm Guy takes a form that is often traditionally used for for love poetry especially in Shakespeare and he he turns its eye upon this particular theme so I enjoy that about this poem so thanks to Brandon for uh, mentioning that and of course to Malcolm Guy for writing it so again here is Ash Wednesday by Malcolm Guy one more time Receive this cross of ash upon your brow, brought from the burning of Palm Sunday's cross. The forests of the world are burning now, and you make late repentance for the loss. But all the trees of God would clap their hands, the very stones themselves would shout and sing, if you could covenant to love these lands and recognize in Christ their Lord and King. He sees the slow destruction of those trees. He weeps to see the ancient places burn, and still you make what purchases you please, and still to dust and ashes you return. But hope could rise from ashes even now, beginning with this sign upon your brow. 
This has been The Daily Poem. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another poem for you.